Mitch Jones, everybody. Mitch Jones. Thanks, buddy. Hey, give it up for Daniel Reskin, everyone. All right. Hey. All right, give it up for Daniel Reskin's very committed hand gesture, welcoming me to the stage. That's always a good thing in this day and age. Because uh, I never know whether people are going to do the handshake or the slap bump kind of thing, you know what I'm talking about? Keeps me up late at night. I screw up a lot of handshakes, uh, just making bad impersonations. I, I don't understand. Some people come low, medium to like, I get that. That's a business pump. Two shakes, we're good. Some folks are a little excited. They come low, medium to medium high. This is still a handshake. I call this the used car salesman because this gets you into a used Prius at low APR. Hey, what's up? I'm Mitch. How you doing, everybody? Someone threw this up at me the other day. They were like, hey. No. There's no way that's a handshake. And I got all the way to the point of hand contact to do the slap bump, and it was a handshake. No! <laughs> They caught me in the princess hand, you know what I'm talking about? I'm like, oh, hello there. I'm the Duchess of Wales, a pleasure to meet you. And they never want to let you go when they get you in the princess hand. So you either have to chew your arm off like the noble wolf, or they have to escort you to the spring cotillion like a proper lady. And ladies, um, I never know how to shake your hand. If you all could have a meeting, get together, and have a uniform handshake, some of you gals out there are throwing up a legitimate princess hand, but you're disguising it as a used car salesman. So when a big oaf like me goes to greet you, I don't know how much pressure to give, and I end up crushing every bone in your hand, and Daniel Reskin has to take me down by the river and shoot me in the back of the head like I'm Lenny from Of Mice and Men. I'm just so putty, Daniel. Why am I so big and strong? <laughs> you guys are a sight for sore eyes, though, Denver. I just got back in from Kansas. Because I'm international. Yeah, that's right. Doing it big with this comedy stuff, you guys. Uh, I get really apprehensive when I go to the not cool states, you know. Colorado's got our legalized cash crop. And... Uh, it, when you go to the other states, it's almost like they're shooting me into space. I stay up late at night just worrying, just like, ah, in Topeka, no one can hear you scream, that kind of weird stuff. But what I did was, the night before, I took a gigantic rip off of a water pipe, <laughs> and uh, then I exhaled it into a suitcase, and that's all I took for the trip, everybody. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, travel light, that's all you got to do. Out there in Kansas, they got these uh, wind turbines. At least that's what they say they are. I'm almost convinced that they're not really wind turbines. They're actually giant propellers because the government is trying to lift Kansas off the face of the earth. Just get rid of it for the rest of us, you know? <laughs> Who wants to go to swimming in Lake Kansas? I do. All right, yeah. See the exotic sunken tractors of Wichita. Okay. Hope nobody's watching in Kansas. <laughs> they're like, let's get them. Tie them up behind a grain silo so that Frankenstein learns how to tell jokes. Okay. You guys. Yeah, good burn on myself. Thanks, studio. <laughs> Thanks, studio audience. I hope you like my outfit. And it looks like uh, I'm a manager of Target on Casual Friday. That's, uh... <laughs> I'll wear the top, but I'm not wearing the khakis, okay? This is my day. <laughs> Oh, you guys, uh, a lot of my jokes were written by marijuana legalization, so that's a thing. Uh, I need to. I need to smoke. I need to. Not want to. Not like to. Not even have to. Need to. Because if I don't, there's an enchanted rose in my room, and every time I don't smoke weed, a petal falls off of that rose. And I lose my chance to turn back into a prince. For who could love a beast? Quick side note about that. Can we all just agree that I'm a more realistic portrayal of the human being that the beast would turn back into once the spell was broken? Yes. Yes. You're telling me this giant buffalo monster has been locked in a castle for 20 years, eating whatever he wants, mostly custard for dinner? And he's going to turn into a chiseled prince with just the right amount of ponytail? Screw you, okay? Disney doesn't just lie to little girls. They lie to sweet little custard boys, too. <laughs> uh, 
I don't know how it is down in I live up near Boulder, Colorado, uh, so uh, I don't know how it is in your dispensaries down here, but they always make you want to have like a story about why you're there, and uh, they're like, well, what kind of high are you looking for? Well, you want to roller skate and play with sidewalk chalk? We got this sativa right here. It's like, no, <laughs> no. Oh, you're more of a teddy bear picnic kind of guy? We got this indica over here. <laughs> No, no, no. That's a double standard. They don't do that in liquor stores where it's also legal to buy. There's not bums stumbling into a liquor store with a fistful of nickels. They're not like, well, hello, sir. What kind of drunk are you looking for today, huh? You want that Limon Bacardi time to party kind of drunk? Is that what you're looking for? <laughs> well, you got about a dollar eighty-six and a button, so... Uh, might I prescribe this, the most psychotic of bum wines, Thunderbird, yeah. What's that? Side effects? Nah, more like direct effects. That's what you're going to feel. <laughs> Some bum wine, you guys. Uh, I went to a McDonald's the other day that still had a play place. That's pretty weird. Uh, I noticed that on the play place, there's a weight limit. You know what a weight limit is? And no, before anyone yells it out, it's not one Mitch Jones, okay? It's not. It's not. It was 10,000 pounds. <laughs> Whoo! 10,000 pounds of children? That is dangerous. Because in today's America, that's like two and a half kids. <laughs> I stopped a fight. I stopped a fist fight with an ice cream cone from McDonald's the other day. It was really awesome. Uh, I was up in uh, Greeley, Colorado. Um, and I was there with my friend. He has long, flowing, hippie hair. And uh, I was waiting for my ice cream. So he went out to the car. And some good old boys from Grayley in all America City, uh, they decided to get in his face. Because apparently, long hair means you're there to push the gay agenda. And I see this happening and I, as I'm getting my ice cream cone. And I was like, oh, no. <laughs> They're going to thrash my boy out there. I got to go help. But also, there's no place to put down my ice cream cone. So I have to take this to the fight now. And if you ever need to stop a fight with just an ice cream cone, here's how you do it. You walk up, menacing as all be out. There gonna be a problem here, fellas? They will run away, okay? <laughs> if he was there to push the gauge, and I don't know what I'm doing with this ice cream cone. I'm here to soft serve it. <laughs> oh, you guys. Uh... <laughs> oh, you know, um, I read a lot. That's uh, on the internet. You know, it counts. I read a lot of articles. You have to click on an extra link to believe what happens next, okay? Uh, I've been in a very exclusive club called Anybody. Um, but... I read this article that was like, 17 reasons to date a girl that only drinks beer. And I was like, okay, this is relevant to my interests. Let's do this. And I looked at it. Reason number one, you can hold her beer bong. Reason number two, she can hold your beer bong. Reason number three, a 30 rack is a date. Reason number four, you always got a beer pong partner. And it went on like that. And I got all the way to the reason number 17 to exclusively date a girl that only drinks beer was she can crush cans on her head. <laughs> Whew, what kind of maniac women are we looking here for? I don't know. Apparently, all I've learned from this article is that the, the perfect woman is Stone Cold Steve Austin. That's uh, <laughs> We're gonna go out purse shopping and that's the bottom line. <laughs> Because girlfriend said so. <laughs> oh, you guys. I don't know. I keep doing that. I don't know why. I, oh, you guys. Uh, <laughs> listening to my jokes, like always. Uh, <laughs> here's something weird that I don't know how to explain. I'm just going to tell you guys. So uh, um, I work a day job. So if you're out there going, yeah, don't quit your day job, don't worry. I haven't. I still got to go to it, OK? Uh, but I was sitting there, and this girl came in, a traveling uh, makeup sales lady. And she was like, you can, it's $100, but today it's $20, and you can buy it for your girlfriend. And I was like, oh, I don't, uh, I don't have a, a girlfriend. And she was like, oh, you can buy it for your wife then. 
And I was just like, well, here's the comedian gene coming out of here. I was like, oh, my wife uh, left me a couple months ago. And without a beat going by, she was like, wow, what a sad life. <laughs> and then she continued standing there like I was going to be like, you know what? Give me 10 sticks of marinara. Uh, not marinara. <laughs> mascara. Give me 10 sticks of mascara. Can I cry that off? You made me super sad. <laughs> um, but here's another thing. That OK, so I was on Highway 36, uh, and there was a crash in the left lane. And the cops told me I had to go around the crash in the toll lane. And I was like, OK, the cops told me to do it, so it's OK. And I did it, and I, I didn't think anything of it. But a, like, a couple days ago, I got a bill in the mail for going in the toll lane for like three seconds, and they want me to pay them 94 cents. Which isn't the bad part. The bad part now is the sick pleasure I get from driving slow in the fast lane, just daring people to pass me, just driving my car, just like, oh, yeah, you want to pass me, don't you? Oh, yeah. You, want, you got 94 cents? You can pass me all night. Yeah, yeah. Would you pass me? I'd pass me. <laughs> I'd pass me so hard. <laughs> oh, you guys. You guys. <laughs> Uh, I think uh, I'm almost out of time, but before I go, I want to tell you one last thing. Um, I had a premonition, you guys. I had a premonition. Um, I don't know if you know about the super caldera that's uh, underneath Yellowstone National Park, but it's uh, about to explode. And yeah, someone wooed it. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> I had a premonition. It, it, it spanned all the way to the year 2019 when the uh, super caldera is supposedly going to explode. And I'd like to take you there now to a scene of a family fleeing the super caldera to the south. We're going to make it, kids. We're going to do it. Dad, you all thought daddy was crazy, but we're going to do it. We're going to get out of here. To... Who the hell put this wall in front of Mexico? <laughs> Let's hope that doesn't happen. Hey, thank you very much for listening. I'm Mitch Jones. Bye.